Hey, hi, hello friends. How's it going? Ash here with Gent Sense. Today I'm gonna to be talking about a fragrance I got in uh, about a week ago from fragrancebuy.ca. It was one of their door crashers. So a super cheap fragrance to pick up essentially. Uh, I don't think it's a door crasher officially anymore, uh, but it's still really cheap. It's like uh, $18 US, give or take a little bit. I guess it depends on uh, what the conversion rates are at the time of the video. Name of the fragrance is Alfaris and it's by My Perfumes. Uh, technically, Arabiat by My Perfumes, Alfaris. Gotta say guys, this is just a you know pro tip from me to you. Uh, My Perfumes uh, does not have quite a ring to it as far as the house name goes, but you keep doing you because according to this box, My Perfumes established 1993. So what do I know? Obviously, they've been doing it for a minute. But yeah, today's video, we're gonna check this cheapie out. We're gonna look at the presentation, break down the smell for you and let you know if it should be on your radar. So let's jump into it. So I guess, first off, we'll start with the customary checking out of the presentation. And I do have this linked below in case you're interested. So here we got the front of the box. You have the name of the house there and also the size and concentration and my assumption as well is that the name of the fragrance is there and Arabic on the front. You also have a little sticker there, your certificate of authenticity. On the top, you have the name of the house on the side, the name of the fragrance and on the back, the ingredient information. And then on the bottom, you have your badge code and your barcode. And the box does have a little bit of like a rubberized feel to it. So it's kind of nice. And here we got the bottle. So you have the name of the fragrance there. You have that same horse design on the front and uh, not too much to it. The cap slides snugly into place. It's really lightweight. And then on the bottom you have a sticker and your badge code is printed there. And I'll go ahead and waste a couple sprays for you guys like always so we can check out the atomizer. So there we go. The atomizer is not too bad really strong though, like where I just sprayed it, you know, it, I can taste it in my mouth. And I'm sure the first thing you noticed when I pulled this bottle out is the first thing that I noticed, which is, holy crap, look how dark it is. It looks like molasses or like Coca-Cola or oil or something. It's just dark, like Black of Gano by Nasamato. It's like that color. So I absolutely would not spray this onto clothing probably gonna stain it, especially lighter colored clothing. Now, to be fair, I did not attempt that, you know? I didn't go and grab one of my uh, light colored shirts and go, <laughs> let's see, <laughs> oh, it's ruined, dang it. But I would not do that just to be safe. And I have to tell you, I was very surprised with how this smells because looking at this, you would think, okay, I know what we're in for here, right? This is gonna be, a heavy Middle Eastern oud fragrance. Hmm? Smoky, woody, incensey. Maybe put some rose in there. That's what this is gonna be. That's what you would think looking at it. Maybe leathery as well, you know, just really. Mm. That is not what this is. And also, I, I don't know that this is trying to be uh, a direct clone of anything, but it does smell like there's bits and pieces of of other things in here if you wanted to start trying to do that contrast and compare type deal, which sometimes is a, a fool's errand because you go into a fragrance just trying to go, oh, well, it's a little bit this, a little bit that, a little bit this, a little bit that. And instead of just approaching the fragrance as it is on its own, you start trying to come up with like arbitrary percentages. You know, it's 30% that and 30% this and 25% that. And it's like you get lost in the sauce sometimes of doing that. So I'll talk a little bit about what it reminds me of to an extent, but it's not really any of those things. Also do wanna give a quick shout out to uh, Smells Good, who is another YouTube channel who uh, covered this a while back. I didn't even realize it. This thing popped up on uh, Fragrance Buy and I uh, saw it on there on the cheap. Actually, a number of different My Perfumes perfumes were on Fragrance Buy. And so I got this in and I was smelling it. And then when I uh, Google searched it to see if I could find any note breakdowns or anything, it popped that video up. So uh, if you want some more information, you can check uh, his video. So anyway, uh, how does this smell? Obviously I said, uh, not oody, not leathery, not smoky. Very sweet, very sweet initially and floral. So in the opening, 
a lot of jasmine, quite a bit, and orange blossom, so white florals, uh, very much in the forefront of the fragrance. The sweetness, uh, as I said, is very pronounced in the opening, comes across uh, a little synthetic smelling, a little bubble gummy, not unappealing, but definitely more toward that side of things. And you may be able to find like a little bit of a similarity, uh, a faint one to how Invictus comes across. So the way Invictus has that bubblegummy type opening, uh, it's a little bit like that, but again, leaning more toward the feminine side of things. You've got a faint hit of citrus there in the open, but not too much, those white florals, and, and frankly, just florals in general kind of swallow it up. Decently fresh in the opening. As it dries down, you get a little ylang, -ylang that comes out and it makes it uh, slightly more dense a little bit of powder around the edges, but not too terribly much. And then you get this warmth that comes out as the fragrance dries down. Musk, vanilla, amber, that starts to come out and become uh, the main focal point of the fragrance and a bit of a cashmere and woodiness around the edges. Once again, giving you that fuzziness, it kind of transitions from like a powdery feeling into more of like a fuzzy woody. And even though this is like very sweet floral forward, and uh, initially leaning a little feminine and then swinging back to a little more masculine. It's not completely removed from some of the other Middle Eastern style fragrances that I've smelled in the past. There are a number of fragrances done by Middle Eastern houses that are typically more affordable. Things like um, Rasasi, for example, maybe Afnan, things like that, where they have different uh, fragrances that are very sweet, floral forward, uh, but still worn predominantly by men that actually do really, really well at pulling positive attention and pulling compliments, sometimes surprisingly so. And so this slots in with a number of different scents uh, that I've smelled over the years. So yeah, if you know nothing about this, this brand, nothing about this house, as I knew nothing about it, and you see this online and you see the coloration, you see the price, uh, you know that it's a Middle Eastern brand. Your assumption is probably going to be, okay, it's a, you know, another clone brand, you know, something along the lines of Armaf, uh, Afnan, Rasasi, Haramein, et cetera, et cetera. And you see the coloration, all this stuff. Uh, you may very well think as I did something like Black of Ghana, which is a fragrance that has been cloned a number of times. So it would kind of make sense. And yet this is the furthest, furthest thing away from that. I can't, you know, reiterate that enough. And also it is strong. This lasts a long time, <laughs> you know, where I sprayed it over here and I said I could taste it. I legitimately could like it, it invades your space. So this is one of those fragrances where a few sprays goes a long ways. So it projects, it lasts a long time. You don't need too much of it. It's probably a good thing because you don't have to worry about spraying on your clothes and staining them. So performance, well above average. You get great bang for your buck there because again, under $20. So for that price point, nice. In terms of seasons, more spring and fall, you know, kind of neutral weather because in the middle of summer, <laughs> it's gonna be too much. I think way too much. It's gonna be one of those fragrances where that sweetness just overloads everyone around you and yourself, and it's not gonna be a good time. It would be better suited for winter than summer, but it's not that that prototypical winter type fragrance. You know, it's not warm and spicy and, and resinous and slightly smoky and gourmandy. It's none of that. This is an abundance of florals, especially white florals in the opening and the mid, quite a lot of sweetness. And then as it dries down, you get a little bit of warmth coming out, but not like your typical winter scent. So for me, spring, summer, it's gonna be the sweet spot, but it would definitely work better in winter than summer. Daytime or nighttime, I mean, I think either one, frankly. Uh, I know that I touched on this briefly before, but I, I need to drive it home. This is one of those fragrances where it is a surprisingly, at least for me, surprisingly massive attention grabber. Everybody I've had smell this, loved it. And I guess that I would lump this in a way and with fragrances like One Million Parfum. I don't think this smells super close to One Million Parfum, but the way that fragrance comes across, it's not the type of scent that a lot of people would say, oh yeah, this is like really masculine. You know, it's sweet. It's kind of doing its own thing. It's got that solar accord. Again, talking about One Million Parfum, but that stuff is just crazy. 
as far as how much people have given me positive feedback on it, even if I don't actually like it that much. Like, I'm not a huge fan of One Million Parfum, but everybody else around me seems to be. This is, you know, in a similar vein. I'm not massively in love with how it smells, but everybody else is. Like everybody else is, is just giving it the business in a good way. But I was wearing it, I had had it on about an hour, and I just completely went like brain dead. And I was messing around with Chrome Aqua and I sprayed it on and immediately as soon as I sprayed it, I was like, ah, oh, dang it. Because obviously like this was still kicking pretty well, but the Chrome Aqua mixed with this stuff smelled sick in a good way, not sick in a bad way, good sick. Something about it, like this was still stronger, but the mixture of those two like the, the freshness and that little bit of green that Chrome Aqua had mixing together with like the, the sweet power of this one, just, mm, it smelled freaking awesome. I don't know if that was just me. You know, I didn't wear it out and about when that happened, but I did keep going in for whips and I was just like, all right, I think I might be onto something there. Might've found an accidental little, you know, secret trick for myself. But yeah, this one, uh, Alfaris, Definitely worth checking out if you're looking for a very powerful fragrance on the cheap that will absolutely garner you attention. Just do be aware, again, uh, in the opening especially, I think it's unisex leaning a little bit feminine. So if you're looking for something hardcore, more typically masculine, this isn't it. But as long as you're okay with that, as it dries down, it gets way easier to wear and people love this stuff. All right, that'll do it for me. Thank you for hanging with me. Stay safe out there and I'll see you again tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.